everybody to Conversations Unhad. Uh, I'm so glad that you've taken time out tonight to get with us on this community conversation. And uh, there's a lot of things that we want to accomplish tonight with our awesome panelists. Uh, so before we get started, before we get jumping into it, uh, I want to say a quick prayer. <clears throat> and then I want to do uh, just a quick intro uh, for everybody and, uh, and introduce our panelists. And then we're going to get started and rolling uh, with some of these questions. Uh, so let us pray. Father God, we just thank you for this awesome opportunity. We thank you for everyone that is connected right now, God, and everybody that's committed and that's coming in, Lord God. We pray that we can have these conversations and take them to another level, God, so that we can see change in our community, change for the better. Lord God, and we put your name first, Lord God, and give your name honor and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. So once again, thank you all for, for <coughs> definitely coming in. Um, I want to get a few uh, uh, thanks and accolades uh, out of the way, so I'm going to... Uh, uh, throw some some things up here on the screen right here uh, North Carolina Arts Council we want to give a special thanks to them um, uh, they really helped out with uh, with helping me to organize this event guest and Arts Council uh, North Carolina General Assembly uh, Senator Kathy Harrington Senator W Ted Alexander Representative John A Torbert uh, Representative Dana Bumgardner and Representative Kelly E Hastings they all helped uh, to be able to uh, give me an opportunity as OPE uh, as a part of OPE Media Group to start bringing sessions like this together. So definitely want to, uh, to give that shout there. And uh, just to give you a brief overview of what we're trying to accomplish here, the purpose and goal is to connect with you, the community, our community, using this platform. We want to engage, encourage, and hopefully inspire you uh, to, and provide some practical as well as spiritual guidance during this very taxing time. Uh, joining me uh, on this panel is over 150 years of ministry and community service and experience, as well as some great leaders in our local community. Uh, the panel also represents a high standard of commitment to faith in God, not to mention that over thousands of families a month have been <coughs> fed and cared for in our communities as a part of their ministries. Uh, so please allow me uh, to do a formal introduction here of our panel. And I am going to uh, give a start over, let's see, I'm going to start over here to my far right it's my right there left i'm going to start with pastor ricky mcclooney uh, out of shelby north carolina has been doing some great things in ministry really helping families and uh and really helping uh, the community out there doing some great great work uh, been in ministry for a long time and really helping out and next to him uh is the angel of this house as they would say uh, pastor george M. Floyd. Uh, Pastor Floyd has been an entrepreneur in this community for several years, responsible for uh, giving jobs and, uh, and really been a leader and at the forefront of things uh, from, from a standpoint of prophetic ministry as well. So great, great man of God. Uh, next to him, we have a uh, man who is also uh, no stranger to our community. Uh, this is Bishop John A. McCullough the second. Bishop uh, is a family Christian church and they've been doing an outstanding job over there of uh, feeding and helping people in the community and doing great things uh, in the community during this pandemic time. And last but definitely not least is Pastor James M. Burris III, and they, he is of Total Refinement Training Ministries, and again, a brother of the community, been serving for a long time, uh, helping people to be clothed and fed for years, even uh, in times past, opened up his home. This man has been uh, for the community for a long, long time. So this is our awesome panel, and with that, we are going to get started with some of our community uh, questions. Uh, so to start off with, we got a few questions that we're going to dive into and uh and definitely you know you guys can can put some things in the comments as well um and we'll we'll be able to go back and look at that because we want this to be a a spark a fire starter if you will to lead to greater things um so so definitely a, a start uh, is what we're looking for and that's what what we have here and i think we're going to be off to a great start uh so gentlemen with that being said um with all the things that are going on uh, in our nation, in our world today, uh, especially 
centered around the coronavirus and all the impact that it's having. One of the pressing questions and a lot of people have talked about is where is God in all of this? Where is God in all of this? Um, <laughs> What do you guys uh, think on that? And, and you know, do you have any insight or wisdom that you would give as far as where is God in all of this? Well, <clears throat> I'll, I'll like to start by saying, first of all, um, a simple answer would be God is everywhere. God is omnipresent. And uh, so despite the issues, the uh, chaos, conflict, situations that are taking place in our society, God is, is, is not abs absent. <clears throat> but I thought about something when I saw the question, Marcus, and that is I think the greater question should be where is mankind in all of this? Often, often when we introduce the God of the Bible to a rapidly changing world, we are met with resistance due to new age thinking and what I call secular viewpoints. So when we say, where is God in all of this, the question itself suggests that perhaps God is irresponsible or that he's absent. Uh, for what's going on, I believe it's very important for us to know that um, not only is God here, but in many cases, God has been speaking to mankind it's just a matter of them responding to, to, the, to the gospel and to the tugging of the Holy Spirit. I saw some insight. Anybody else, gentlemen, have anything on that? Well, Marcus, you, you said fam I'm from Family Church a few minutes ago. It's Friendship Christian Church. <laughs> My apologies, That's Bishop. all right. My That's apologies. All right. I'm a little nervous, man. I That's got greatness right. in front of me, Bishop. <laughs> man, listen, you know, I agree. You know, God, God is not surprised and caught off guard by anything that is happening. God is um, always in control. He is always present. And, um, you know, we know that all things work together according to the scripture for good because we love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. And God allows, you know, various things to happen in, in certain time periods and seasons. And a pandemic is... Uh, nothing that has caught God, um, you know, sleeping, unaware. The scriptures tell us that when we start turning toward end times that we would see pestilence and famine and so forth in the land. So uh, this is something that we ought not be surprised as believers mm -hmm. that we're seeing these things as well. And so when people ask, you know, where is God in this, I think they're is sort of an accusatory yes, sir. Uh, position that they have taken, that I should not have to experience anything that um, makes me uncomfortable, anything that causes me disruptions in my own life. There has probably not been, among those who asked that question, a lot of concern about where God was and is while things were going to suit them, things were going, you know, uh, they were going about their pleasure and so forth. But now that the interruption has come, now we want to know where is the God of the Bible? And you got to ask in this day and time, which God are you asking about? Yeah. Because there are so many people who are serving these uh, uh, diverse gods and, and have these, uh, you know, we, we, we have so many um, faiths and religions and so forth. And uh, the God of mammon, you know, we, we, we got to deal with that as well. So, you know, when they ask that question, I think it's very general is that I, I don't want to be uh, in any kind of uh, uncomfortable position. I don't want to be inconvenienced in my routine of my going about, you know, my own uh, selfish ways. And uh, so I think that we have to look at that a little further and maybe get some and drill down and get some more specific questions because that is very general. Where is, Where he? is he? It depends on what you need him to be. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Man. Well, right. <clears throat> where is God in all this? You know, the question that I ask is, 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 what, is what God is referring to. Uh, we know that, that the God that we serve, who is Jehovah God, uh, he, he's always present. Mm -hmm. and, and, and he knows uh, what is happening in his earth. Nothing uh, in the earth is catching him uh, by surprise. And God is never absent. The Bible teaches us that God... Uh, is omnipresent, which means that he is everywhere uh, at the same time. 
the book of Amos uh, assures us that surely the Lord does nothing in the earth until he first speaks uh, to the prophets. Uh, pandemics uh, are a part of the hidden mysteries of darkness. They are unveiled to the men and women of God. In Daniel 2 and 22, uh, it reads that God revealeth the deep and secret things. Uh, he knoweth uh, what is in the darkness, and the light dwelleth uh, with him. I also like the verse in Daniel 4 and 17, it says, To the intent that the living may know that the, that the Most High ruleth. And if he ruleth, he knows what's going on. The Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men, and giveth uh, it to whomsoever he will, and set up over them the basis of men. We must understand that his sovereign rule assures us that nothing ever takes God by surprise. Mm -hmm. This pandemic did not surprise God no more than the bubonic plague or the Spanish flu mm -hmm. or any other plague or virus which proceeded will come after this one. God is omniscient. God knows everything. When we say God knows of the future, it is because he has already planned it and designed it. Jeremiah 1 and 12 says, I will hasten my word to perform it. He knows, all, he knows about all human events. Yes, even sporting events. <laughs> yes, he sir. knows all human decisions and has skillfully incorporated all of it into his plan. So like you say, God has not been taken by surprise. That's right. Mm -hmm. Ezekiel 12 and 25 says, for I am the Lord, mm -hmm. I will speak, and the word that I shall speak shall come to pass. Shall come to pass, shall mm -hmm. come to pass. Mm -hmm. He has skillfully incorporated all of it into his plan. And in all that takes place None of it can override his plan or his pur purpose. Amen. Therefore, God can never be surprised by his own work. Amen. Pastor McClooney, any final thoughts on this question? Oh, yes, I'll be brief uh, because I've, I'm learning again from uh, my leaders. Uh, but I was thinking about that question due to the fact that when we are in the Bobby shop, and people ask those questions because you are the pastor uh, of a church. And I would have to say is that God is right where he's always been. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, nothing has changed concerning him. But we know this is that God is in control. And the question went on even further to say, well, why is God allowing this to happen? Notice this is that if we're in it, God allowed it. I can never say that God caused it, but he did allow it. Because don't nothing, as pastors have just shared with us, come or catch God off guard. God is in control. So with that, those questions actually were coming from church people. Wow. You see, so what I'm saying is, is that did we have church and we never got God? Because if you got God, that wouldn't be the question, okay? So the question, as I believe Pastor Burr says, uh, where are we, okay? So right now, where is God? Right where he's always been. And now we as a people need to look unto him with any situation that goes on, in, on the earth. And that's my brief moment for that. Amen, amen. 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 Strong start, gentlemen. <laughs> Strong start. I like it. I like it, definitely. Uh, so we'll move on. Um, in this question, we want to kind of address as far as from a leadership standpoint, and we know that you guys are doing great things uh, as far as in your ministries, but we have other leaders out there as well. Um, we have leaders on the, the spiritual side of things, and then we have leaders on the political side of things as well. Uh, so the question is, what do you think our leaders should be doing to help our situation, our current situation, our current community situation from a spiritual standpoint, as well as what possibly could be done from a political viewpoint as well. Any particular thoughts that you 
are speaking about in particular issues, items that are in the community? I'm, I'm thinking that the, the consensus on this one <clears throat> was basically centered around the things that are impacting our community to the most. What can our spiritual leaders as well as our political leaders do to help that? Or those, those particular things. Mm -hmm. And then you, you said from a spiritual point of view. As well as what the political, political side possibly could do as well. Well, I'd like to uh, start on that one, and that would be, one, spiritually, is that we not be divided, okay? Uh, in our prayer, we are focusing our prayers toward God, asking God for answers for uh, this world, for this situation. And when they see the spiritual leaders being on one accord, I believe that we can better have a voice into our communities. Along with the, uh, the political side of it, uh, we have, I believe in our cities, uh, anointed pastors to not only just preach the word, but they can gather information. Uh, like, uh, like me, um, I may not be uh, astute on the uh, political side of it, but I know brothers or pastors in my community that they they there all the time with it. That's, they are part of that. So guess what I do? I stay in my lane and I, I question them. What do we need to be doing? What do we need to be looking for? And they give answers to that. <coughs> then, for as my part, I'm kind of the boots on the ground pastor. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it, it makes them no better. It makes me no better. But that's my lane. So I'm kind of talking with the thugs in the street and, 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 you know, kicking it with them. But at the same time, I'm gathering information in higher places. And now I'm kind of taking it back to the street. Now, fellas, this is what, let me help you understand where they're coming from. So now, not only that, and we are praying. Uh, the Bible teaches us to watch as well as pray. All right. So with that, I'm gathering information from people that I respect. Uh, as leaders like like we have on this panel tonight, uh, those guys, I, I watch them and I, I've seen them do things in the community. And also uh, on the uh, with politician uh, situation, politician situations, I've seen those guys get that information to help me to make decisions, even in our community. Well, awesome. this is what I this is what I think. Uh, the ministry of Jesus was both spiritual and political. Mm -hmm. you know, sometimes we think about Jesus as being uh, just a spiritual leader, but he was both spiritual and, and political. Because, he, you know, he warned us of things that would, that would come. And to me, a pandemic uh, is something that is, that is spiritual. And it's not something that should be taking us by surprise. Because he talked about it in, in Matthew 24, he talked about uh, pandemics or, or pestilences. And we've had over 2,000 years uh, to read the New Testament Bible, 2,020 years. And, and it's amazing that there are things happening uh, in the spiritual world and in the political world that God, some of the things God addressed in the Old Testament and Jesus addressed many other things uh, in the New Testament. Jesus has already warned us that pandemics were coming. So, so we, as a, we as a group, you know, he's given us 2,000 years to read the book. Not only to read the book, but to study the book. Do you know that, that there are eight to one um, scriptures in the Bible that concerns his second, the second advent opposed to the first advent? In Matthew 24 and 7, Jesus says, For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in, time, in diverse places. The pestilence are the pandemics. You know, I used to wonder, uh, uh, what did this word mean, pestilence, until I went to the dictionary and looked at the word pestilence, and it means pandemics. And we are seeing pandemics, we are seeing signs of the coming of the Lord in this age in which we live. Spiritual leaders should be more concerned about uh, the kingdom agenda rather than earthly agenda. And, 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 and I think 
the, the kingdom agenda is, is, is saying to us, it, it is time for us to prepare our people uh, for uh, an earth, a kingdom from heaven that will come to earth where, where the Son of God, who is Jesus, will, will rule and reign on the earth uh, as a king forever. Uh, Jesus has already warned us that pestilence were coming. Mm -hmm. We should not be surprised or caught off guard. Spiritual leaders should have already prepared our hearts and minds uh, for end time prophecies that would come to pass in the end of days as we understand them. Spiritual leaders should be more informed of the times <clears throat> and seasons of when these things would come to pass. Those spiritual leaders who are not aware of his soon return are not in tune uh, to the times and seasons con concerning uh, the soon uh, return. Uh, Christ will return to the earth and he will establish uh, his kingdom uh, on this earth. And it is high time that, that those of us who are true spiritual leaders, mm -hmm. that we not be afraid uh, to tell the people that that he's coming and that he's going to rule and reign as king. Amen. All right. Bishop, pastor. Well, you know, when you think about uh, spiritual, political, as Christians, we uh, tend to think sometimes uh, in terms of carnal and spiritual. But the truth is that we are all spiritual. We, right. we, we don't separate right. spiritual and carnal. And so... Yet we understand that the things that are in the natural world, the things that are happening uh, with, within the political realm will impact us as we uh, go about our spiritual lives. And so every decision that's made by politicians and you know, all of the things that they enact and legislate, they will impact the people that we serve. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so we then have to have a concern both uh, politically and spiritually and try to guide and lead our people to know how to respond to and uh, how to act upon and either reject or uh, maybe concur or accept some of the things that are happening in the political world. But everything that politicians do impact us. And so amen, we, amen. as uh, spiritual leaders, uh, we take the Bible and the teaching and then we know how to respond to it. We know what the expectations are. And then when you think about the uh, teaching on the seven mountains and so forth that um, is prevalent and you're trying to get Christian believers into certain places, into positions in the culture so that we can uh, legislate and impact from a spiritual perspective. I think what we have uh, that has happened that maybe we can look at now that has caused so much division is that we have tried to put people on these mountains, political and educational and, and so forth, and there seems to be some uh, diverse agendas. And so when we start talking about spirituality and our approach biblically, it's almost like we're talking from two different perspectives mm -hmm. when we hear the messages that we hear uh, from mm -hmm. political and uh, those who are supposed to be spiritually political yes, and supporting uh, political uh, candidates and so forth. And it is seemingly contradictory to what we believe in the word. Mm -hmm. So I think there's some confusion in, in the context of believers and Christians as to how we approach it because listen it's almost come down to and you hear this term a lot you know evangelicals and so forth and other believers and there seems to be some sort of uh, culture clash mm -hmm. that's happening a yes, spiritual sir. clash of understanding and I think that when we start talking about um, spirituality and politics that sometimes what we say as the Bible mm -hmm. uh, in politics seems to be more of Americanism mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. than it is Amen. straight Bible. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And so we wow. then start seeing people who are supporting and pushing for agendas that don't always speak to what's equal for everybody. Yes, sir. And so we have to really, really try to continue to keep ourselves abreast as to what's happening. Mm -hmm. uh, one of my professors said, listen, a preacher always needs to have the Bible in one hand, and back then he said, and the newspaper in another hand. <laughs> but what he's talking about, being 
aware as yes, to what's yes, going yes, on, yes, right. you know, in the yes. culture yes, so that we can respond because there's nothing that is happening. As I think uh, Pastor George said that, um, you know, when you start thinking about the things from the Old Testament to the New Testament and the things that have been prophesied and spoken about that were coming are coming. Mm -hmm. And so then how do we respond to those things and what do we do under these particular um, political coverings that we have, how do we still function and, and still uh, have a great well-being as Christians? Because we don't have to be, feel bound. Mm -hmm. Listen, and as far as African-American Christians have come mm -hmm. uh, and concerned, we've come through a lot, mm -hmm. even as there seems to be these two uh, agendas of Christianity, right. and a lot of our community does not want to accept Christianity mm -hmm. because it seems to be skewed uh, negatively for African American people. Mm -hmm. yes, sir. And so we got to help them to understand that Jesus, well, well, Christians were present and black Christians were present uh, at Pentecost. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. You know, this was not something that no, has just Christian. been handed down uh, since American slavery. So it's not new. This is not new. We yes, were sir. there. And yeah. so we're not, we're not um, pushing a, a white man's religion. Yes, sir. You know, all and right. so I think we get all these kind of convoluted things that are happening in the culture and in our community that have us confused. And a lot of that is coming from the basis of Christians at, that have slashed politics uh, within that. That's yeah. awesome. Good That's yes, awesome. Yes. Pastor? Spiritually speaking, I, I, and the Lord gave me this early, I think, take this off, I think from a spiritual perspective as preachers of the gospel, is important that we get back to basics. Mm. Uh, I'm reminded of Mark chapter 16, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. And to kind of segue off of what Bishop was saying as far as the kind of uh, cultural conflict where there's this narrative that if you're not uh, Republican and you're not pushing uh, abortion rights or tra the traditional definition of the family, then uh, you, you, can't, you can't be Christian. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's important that we not uh, tie republicanism, if you will, for lack of a better term, mm -hmm. uh, with being a Christian. Mm -hmm. In other words, you can, you can be Democrat and still be a believer, yes. to put yes. it frank. But from a spiritual perspective, I think we really need to get back to preaching the gospel. I was thinking earlier today that a lot of our our ministries and churches sometime in our efforts to reach as many people as we can, if we're not careful, we can compromise the preaching of the gospel mm -hmm. and in using uh, different met methodologies trying to reach folk. Um, and I, I'm gonna say this and hopefully I'm not, um, I don't think I'm throwing rocks, but you know, you see preachers on um, TV with little skinny jeans and muscle shirts and <laughs> I'm not saying then I'm not saying anything's wrong with that but I think sometimes we use natural methods to try to reach a certain group mm -hmm. but I think if we'll just get back to the simplicity of mm -hmm. the preaching of the gospel mm -hmm. the word of God under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit will impact this community yes. gentlemen that segues ways into a question that I received and I thought this was a uh, very interesting uh, perspective uh, so I have to respect it um, so it was more of a statement, but in the, along the lines of what we're talking about, I think we can turn it into a, a situation where we can answer a question, if you will. The statement was, I feel as though our government only cares when you break a law and when they need a vote. Hmm. So in looking at that statement, how do we connect our kingdom things that we're doing, you know, from a spiritual standpoint and what we're doing in the community, how do we connect with the political powers that be and what does that look like how do we do that where do we even start to make that happen because as we've talked about we you know we have a kingdom mindset and we're looking more closely on the ground at the community but they're in law making decisions and they're hearing from capitol hill and they you know they're kind of in in their positions dealing with what they're dealing with but you have people that's in the community that feel like they're only cared about if they do something wrong 
or if somebody needs to vote. So how do we address that? Well, the Bible says, <clears throat> love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. But if any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. You know, sometimes we, you know, we try to go along just to get along. And sometimes people are so wicked in their hearts, uh, regardless of what we do, because, you know, we've been struggling and striving with, with Americans, you know, for three or 400 years and doesn't seem to have any inroads. Uh, I believe the only thing that we can do as a people is pray and see uh, how God is going to make the difference uh, in our lives. And I can see the reversing of change uh, in this country. Uh, I know I watch TV and, and I can see quite a few uh, African Americans who are part of more commercials than I ever seen in my life. I'm almost 70 years old mm -hmm. and I have never seen so many. <laughs> so many black commercials on television. I don't know if that's because they know that we spend $1.3 trillion a year in this country or what's going there on. Go. But, but uh, the change is coming. Uh, we don't know how they're coming, but we know that they're, that they're coming and we can see it. We can feel it in the air. And not only can we feel it and see it coming, there's another group that can, that can see it coming because they feel threatened by it. So the only thing we can do is pray and, and not break the law uh, do the best we can to live right and do right. Uh, maybe some of the other guys have better answers than me, but you know, our our greatest force and our greatest power that we have uh, is the power of prayer. And when we pray, God will make a change. He will make a difference in our lives. Amen. You know, I was thinking along the lines also of the question as it was framed that there does not seem to be much concern unless we break a law mm -hmm. or until the time that politicians need a vote. Mm -hmm. And if that's a person's reality, it's because that person has accepted that. Mm -hmm. And that good. person has created an atmosphere for that to be good enough. Mm -hmm. And so what we've been trying to do from grassroots all the way up the, uh, the line is to engage people to get involved to be a part and not wait until there's an emergency, but mm -hmm. let's come together and exercise uh, power. Uh, those, I'm talking about people who are not born again as well as people mm -hmm. who are born again. Yes, sir. Uh, collaborating, working together for all the good. Mm -hmm. We understand from a, a spiritual perspective, a biblical perspective, they may not have gotten there yet and we're still trying to win people, but as we are trying to win them, uh, we're caring about uh, the things that they're concerned about daily well-being jobs economics and you know uh, where they are living where they end up or uh, show forth on the poverty uh, line and so forth uh, how do they gain wealth everything that concerns the human the children in school and all we can't wait and sometimes as african americans we wait until there's an emergency we wait uh, before we get concerned or get involved when it looks like we've been denied something. And so I think that in these next coming years, we've got to become more proactive. Pro and all yes, of sir. us reaching people at different places. Pastor McClooney talked about, you know, grassroots and, and right, boots on the ground and so forth. All of us impact people differently, mm -hmm. but we got to have this collaborative message that we don't wait anymore That's right. yes, sir. to something is taken from us. Mm -hmm. If we are ahead of the game and utilizing our biblical power, our spiritual power, our faith, then I think we'll see a turnaround. But until then, it'll just be complaints with people saying they don't care. Well, they may not. But do you care enough to do something in your own community? Mm -hmm. Yes, I love it. Yes, sir. Awesome. Yeah. I like what Pastor McCullough <laughs> said, that whether you're saved or not saved, we need to come together. As a, as a people mm -hmm. and, and try to bring about the change because that's what other people groups do. Mm. They are not really concerned about whether you're saved or whether you're unsaved. They just want to come together and get the thing done. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we won't work with the unsaved. You know, we're saving on our way to heaven mm -hmm. and we're so glad mm -hmm. and uh, we're not concerned about our brothers who are unsaved. Mm -hmm. We sort of isolate ourselves uh, from them. That's a very powerful statement what Pastor McCullough just said. We need to yes, come sir. together as a group of people mm -hmm. and help bring about a change. And we can do it. Yes, sir. Because, we, because yep. we've seen it done, oh, what, yeah. three or four, a month ago? Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah, we, yeah. We, we, we can see the change. That's good stuff. Yes, well, uh, 
connecting it and all the dots seem like. I think what uh, I like about this particular conversation is uh, answering uh, the question, how do we help our community to not actually, as Bishop McCullough just said, uh, be reacting? Now, if that's the information or the question is coming across and you've asked that question, he said that we bought into it. Mm. Well, let's buy into the information now. Mm -hmm. We already see it. This is the way it goes on. Whether they care or not, here go the real question. Do we care enough Yes. to actually let them know that we do care? Mm -hmm. You see? So yes. when we come together, okay, I believe that all of us together, we can have a, a better impact mm -hmm. on our community. Mm -hmm. If it's just me, I'm going to have a fraction of an a, of a, a impact. But you bring all this power together, and we bring all those negative, even negative minds, mm -hmm. and start teaching them that, listen, you can argue all you want to, but at the end of the day, are you willing to show how much you care outside of your arguing? And that's what we have a lot of, especially in the black community, is that we want to complain. Okay, but yeah, we have a right to raise our voice and, and, and make it, but are we willing to do the work? After we get the information, are we willing to do the work? So now, we will have uh, people now of color running for office, yes. knowing what, what they're talking about. And back to the spiritual side of it, pastors knowing about the, the uh, the politics of it, the ups and downs of the situation, and they convey it. Yes, I'm going to preach the gospel, as Pastor Burr said, but we have to gather information, too, yes. to give to our people. That's why we've been saying it for so long. You, you don't have a voice if you don't go vote. That's good. Yes, right. sir. Amen. Pastor, you have anything well, on I, it I to wrap it up? I think just one passage came to mind. Two are better than one. And yes. a threefold cord should not be easily broken. So um, it's just important for us to, to work together and to, to operate as a unit. Mm -hmm. yep. Amen. And, oh, go ahead. And we must also remember that uh, we are a part of a dual kingdom. You know, we're born on earth, and then we're born from above. So, so we're not only a part of a, of a heavenly kingdom, but we're, we're a part of an earthly kingdom because God gives us laws uh, that come from the heavenly kingdom that we're supposed to act out in the earthly kingdom. So we must remember that, that we're not just uh, heavenly minded, that we're not, not earthly good. Mm -hmm. uh, we're, to, we're to make provisions for our children and even for our grandchildren. We're not to, to say, well, I'm going to heaven and that's, and that's a good thing. That's all I'm going to do. No, we are part of a dual kingdom. You, you are part of an earthy kingdom, so the thing that you must do in this earthy kingdom, and you are part of a spiritual kingdom, and there are things that you must do to be a part of that spiritual kingdom. Mm -hmm. Amen. So segueing into um, uh, what I feel like, well, everything is relevant, everything has its death, but I feel like this is going into a life or death type of um, scenario with a lot of people's thinking with the pandemic and what's going on. Uh, there are a lot of fears. Uh, there are a lot of reserves. People are going through a lot of things. Um, in essence, one question came across that was concerning the suicide rate. It seemed like from their standpoint that things elevated the last time we were in a lockdown. Um, and it's a possibility that we could be headed towards something like that, possibly again. Um, what do you guys think that can be done to help to combat uh, suicide if, if indeed we go through that? And even with what we're having to face now, even with the, the social distancing and, and not being able to get together like we usually do. Well, you know, when you start thinking about difficult times and difficult days and you start seeing suicide rates go up at certain times and seasons, I think that um, when you see that, it's an indication of something that's already um, symptomatic and something that's already going on that emerges when there's a little more added pressure. Mm 
Mm -hmm. uh, people are, are living hopeless lives. Um, people are living sometimes, you know, not knowing what's next, what, what to expect. Uh, sometimes we understand that there are people who have emotional issues and so forth. So when there are pandemics and times that we're experiencing and things like this, I think you'll start seeing more and more pressure. And people, you know, they think that that's the way out, mm -hmm. a temporary solution, a permanent solution to a temporary problem. Mm -hmm. And so what we have to do then, our responsibility spiritually is to preach hope, expectation. There are alternatives. Uh, and I think that we have to also come up out of the Bible and our traditional ways of addressing issues and social problems and emotional problems. You know, when I was growing up, there was not a time that uh, in the African-American community that you would consider going to a counselor, mm -hmm. uh, psychiatrist, psychologist. Mm -hmm. That was out of the question. It was Jesus only. <laughs> and yet we go to uh, other doctors other to things. address other things. Mm -hmm. And so I think in the last 20, 25 years or so, uh, the church has become more open to having more of that emotional side of things dealt with. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, from a spiritual perspective, I refer people that are out of my league. This has gone to a level now. I'm praying, I'm anointing, and we're calling out demons and so forth. But Sometimes we need to send them to some other people who are mm -hmm. trained in some areas beyond what we have expertise for mm -hmm. and not just say if Jesus didn't do it, it's too bad because people need some other things that we uh, cannot give. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's uh, medical. Sometimes there, you know, it's chemical. And so all these things converge, mm -hmm. which suggests that we need to utilize every option. Mm -hmm. And so forth. I send them to spiritual or Christian counselors, but I'll refer people. And so what we have to do then uh, collectively is to really speak hope because anything can set people off. And especially when you come into these type of uh, circumstances that we're dealing with, it gives uh, solid people uh, this kind of pressure and uh, things can, can cause, you know, those who may not be having any issues, um, you know, a lot of skepticism shaking everybody up. yeah it's shaking mm -hmm. everybody's foundation is being shaken but the good thing is that when we see all the things that we're seeing people uh we don't sorrow when you see people die we don't sorrow as people without hope when christians die if someone dies of COVID, you know we're believers we know where they're going to spend eternity and so mm -hmm. forth and when we have that assurance we don't panic you know we want to live uh, as long as we can on this side, enjoying this side. But we do know that uh, we've prepared for another uh, eternity mm -hmm. and our eternal life has begun. But even believers can lose hope mm -hmm. and become fearful and overwhelmed mm -hmm. and choose things that may not be in their best interest from drinking to smoking to mm -hmm. drugging mm -hmm. and anything that tries to relieve them of that immediate pain. Mm -hmm. And so during pandemics, we've got to kind of make sure we are checking on people and watching people and uh, letting them know it's all right to hurt, but there are some ways that you don't have to take your lives. There are some alternatives that give you hope and a future. Amen. 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 Yes, sir. Amen. Yes, sir. Any other thoughts on that? Well, uh, B Bishop is just uh, anointed to answer on the spot like that. I'll tell you, it's just wonderful. Uh, I'm reminded of what my pastor told me, uh, and he says that uh, your job is to assist, provide, cover, mentor, accountability, and simultaneously model emotional, healthy, spiritual life. So with that being said, Bishop, just let you know that sometimes we can feel the pressure Sometimes, matter of fact, honestly, we do feel the pressure. Yes, sir. But our trust is in the Lord. Mm -hmm. Okay? Sorry. And that is what we need to do one another. Not only the pastor needs to uh, model this, but for one another, we need to be spiritually, emotionally healthy. Check on your family. Check, check on, your, on your Check on your family. Some of these things are practical, but they are very powerful when we do this. 
okay? Uh, spiritually, emotionally healthy. Hey, listen, at one time we was able to run around the church and, and have a good time and emotionally feel good. But are we actually physically, emotionally, spiritually healthy? This pandemic is revealing it mm -hmm. if we're not. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, we don't have to give up either. And there is a God that says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So committing suicide is not the answer. Turning to God and letting God be God in your life, he'll turn it around. What the enemy meant for your bad, he said he'll turn it around and work it out for your good. Mm -hmm. Just trust him. Amen. You know, Amen. I have a friend uh, who is a psychologist, and he said that the majority of black people, uh, we're never, we know we're told to go to the doctor, we're told to go uh, to the, the heart doctor and the brain doctor and you know, everything that deals with our, the physical. Mm -hmm. uh, as Pastor McCullough had said earlier, you know, in the past 20, 25 years, you know, we, we finally realized that, that that a foot healing the foot and, and working on the heart that there is another part of us uh that needs help mm -hmm. uh, a couple a couple of years ago uh i had this pharmacist tell me something and it and it really helped me i was i was getting real nervous and frustrated about a lot of things uh, going on in business and in church and, and at home and, and he, he just told me a, a, a few he just said a few words to me I got to talking to him. We talked for about 15 minutes. He said, George, I figured out your problem. He said, you're thinking too far ahead. <laughs> <laughs> and when he said that, it is amazing, the, the, just those words, George, you're thinking too far ahead. And when he told me that, you'd be surprised at the peace that came over me, although I had been saved 25 or 30 years. Mm. The, just those few words. And sometimes in, 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 in life, we as 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 uh, minorities or black people, we we never have any any, any type of psychiatric uh, help, mm -hmm. and it's so important. But most of all, uh, the thing that that brings us peace and joy, and and, and love and, and happiness in this life, even in pandemics, is, is to have the person of the Holy Spirit. I mean, the Bible says that he, he is a, he's a great physician. Mm -hmm. uh, he's, a, he's a healer in, in, in times of need. Yes, sir. And in these uh, uh, times that we're living in, uh, if people need, the, the thing that they need most is hope. Uh, you know, the Bible says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And in the presence of the Lord, there's fullness of joy mm -hmm. and pledges forevermore. When you think about verses like that, to me, it doesn't matter whether I stay or whether I go. Mm -hmm. Because the Bible says that in the presence of the Lord, there is fullness of joy mm -hmm. and pleasures. How long? Forevermore. Yeah. Yes, sir. So, so, so when, when, when I allow those verses to run through my mind when I'm troubled, you know, when, 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 when you can get the, the word of God on the inside, mm -hmm. even in a pandemic, uh, you can have peace. You can have peace. Amen. Pastor Burris, got anything well, on that? No, I've, I'm, I'm encouraged to hear Bishop point out the fact that it is not unspiritual to get counseling mm -hmm. or to get mm -hmm. mental That's or right. emotional help right. because I think, you know, my early, my early walk with Christ, we always basically, in, in, in no certain terms, we always kind of taught that if you had emotional or mental issues, that it was a demon. Mm -hmm. And to even think about uh, going to a counselor was somehow you didn't have faith or you weren't trusting in God. So I, I'm, just, I, I'm just encouraged that Bishop brought that out. And I yeah. think the, we don't know how many that may be listening that that may have given them a release mm -hmm. to know that, hey, I can, I can walk with God. Mm -hmm. I can be born, born again. Yes and still seek uh, spiritual counseling. Because I kind of felt like that's what Pastor Floyd was saying. Yes. And in a way that even though he was a man of God, running his church, running his business, he, he was under pressure. Yes, right. yes. And through, through counseling, he, he got a release. Mm -hmm. So whatever we do, you know, it's important for us to make sure we know that it's not unspiritual to mm -hmm. receive uh, counseling. 
That's right. All right, gentlemen, uh, we are close to an hour here, so I want to let this be the final question for this segment. Um, however, what I will say to anyone that's, that's tuning in, uh, we do want to keep this up. We want to keep this going. So share, share this uh, as you go throughout the week and, uh, and definitely inbox us. Let us know uh, your thoughts. If there are other questions that you felt like you wanted to be answered or that was pressing, we want the conversation to continue. Those that are unhad, we want to have them. And, uh, and we want to invite more leaders in uh, so that we can start seeing a change and a difference. Um, so this final question, is centered once again around one of the most pressing things and that's COVID-19 um, and uh, a lot of people are skeptical about what's being said and heard uh, as far as the vaccine is concerned a lot of people in the community have it's, it's almost like a 50 50 if you will some people say yeah give it to me if it, if it works other people are like i'm not i don't want nothing to do with that mm -hmm. you know um so as far as from you guys perspective what do you think we should do? How do you feel about the coronavirus COVID-19 vaccine and how we should approach it? And once again, we can take two angles from a practical approach and from a spiritual approach. Okay, let me share this real quick. I wrote this down. I strongly support medical science and believe if we have developed a vaccine that's capable of, of, of eradicating the virus, I'm all for it. However, uh, the pace in which it was developed and knowing it, it haven't been properly tested makes me, and I'm speaking from a personal uh, perspective, it makes me a, a little apprehensive. I also, I also take issue with uh, uh, standing certain individuals up as the voices of expertise and then shutting down, the shutting down of voices of trained and some seasoned professionals who express concern or may offer alternatives. And I'm not just talking about, uh, you know, these folk running around saying this fake and, mm -hmm. and so forth, but I'm talking about other professionals, other trained doctors who have who, concerns. Who, who have concerns. Mm -hmm. And I noticed this, that uh, there, there have been uh, several doctors, I should have written their names down, that expressed concern and that spoke concerning those things and, and the majority of the media shut them down. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, so their, their voices couldn't be heard. So uh, I'm not against the vac vaccine if it, if it truly works. And uh, like I said, I, I, I believe in medical science, but I also believe that it's important because in anything we do in life, if you're making an investment, you're about to purchase a house, you usually, you want several perspectives, you know. Uh, so I, I think it's important that we, we look at all perspectives. You know, as it relates to uh, the vaccine, I, I, I think when we think about this whole pandemic, you know, one of the questions that was raised there uh, along these lines on the uh, post uh, was dealing with the purpose for it. Is there a reason for this? You know, I think that all things that happen can point to people needing to know that this world is perishing. Mm -hmm. Everything that is happening here is going down and that they must seek a higher alternative and a, a better place for the continuation of their eternity. Now, when you start thinking about the vaccine, uh, skepticisms and so forth, one, African Americans tend to think uh, more skeptically about these type of general things. Mm -hmm as we point back to Tuskegee Institute and that mm -hmm. whole study, uh, which was a sham and, um, you know, sort of used those African-American men as guinea pigs and so forth. This time is not just a pointed group mm -hmm. that this vaccine is uh, for a collective uh, a group of people, everybody. So we may not have to be as apprehensive there as we would have been if this was for a specific group. Yes, sir. All right. And then the other thing is that in, we have so many conspiracy theories yeah. that yeah. are just emanating. <laughs> and, uh, you know, everything from the vaccine is going to be something that the scientists and, and the people who try to run the world uh, want to inject into you so that they can now 
keep up with you. It'll be some molecule in there that will remain <laughs> attached and you'll have <laughs> GPS signaling and it'll d tell everywhere you go, sort of the mark of the beast mm -hmm. that we have all sort of wondered what is it going to be and mm -hmm. we come to the one world system. So you get all those things factored into the vaccine and it almost makes people say, I want to wait and see if somebody else turns into a monkey before I take it. <laughs> yes, sir. And so you got all these things working, and you got the spiritual aspect, the biblical prophetic side, and you know the natural side. And I think everybody has to come to a conviction mm -hmm. that if this is something that um, has been developed, as so many other things have been developed, and I know that there is a question about uh, how rapid it has been done, but everything has moved now to, mm -hmm. to, to advancement. Mm -hmm. And yes. so it's coming to the place now, scientists are, are smarter, we, we have more technology, so mm -hmm. we could have come to this at this point. Mm -hmm. If it's something that's going to help all of us, then I think we have to prayerfully consider that I take it as a point of continuation. Uh, you know, there's a new strand that has come out today in the UK that they're talking about a new strand mm. that um, is has these uh, mutations that are uh, developing very quickly where it's making it difficult mm. for it to be contained. Mm. So now they have a question, is this vaccine going to be enough to cover this new wow. strand? Wow. And so the, the <clears throat> scientists are saying that, you know, they believe it is. They're talking about limiting travel to the UK or should the travel or uh, re restrict people coming from the UK. So you got all these things now that right when we get a vaccine, boom, here's, here's another one that they're saying has popped up and emerged that could put pressure on whether this vaccine is enough. So we got to just continue to try to be um, as focused as we can, make the best decision we can for ourselves. I won't push it on anybody else. You got to come to your own conviction. God has made us free moral agents. Mm -hmm. And, you know, everybody won't do it. And all these factors come into play as to whether a person will or not. So I just say be prayerful, utilize your own convictions because there's going to always be something else because we are in a time where everything is perishing. This world is coming to uh, close. We don't know the day nor the hour, but you're going to see these things happening, mm -hmm. and we do the best we can with what we have. Amen. 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 Stick with the facts. <laughs> no, that, that, that's what I say to all of the listeners uh, tonight. Stick with the facts. Uh, there, there are a lot of, as the bishop has already said, I think the bishop was leaning on my shoulder reading my, reading my paper. <laughs> 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 but stick with the facts. Don't, don't listen to people who have no medical experience. Mm -hmm. uh, don't listen to people who are not disease experts. Mm -hmm. Don't listen to people uh, who, are, who are not, have not been dealing with infectious diseases. Mm -hmm. Because there are a lot of people in Washington, in, in California, all around the United States that doesn't have any medical experience uh, it, not, the majority of them are not epidemiologists. Come on, like so me. let's stick with the let's stick with the fact. Let's let's listen to people who have been studying diseases uh, for 30, 40, and fifty years. I believe we have one of the best epidemiologists uh, uh, in the world, almost. I think Dr. Fauci is one one of the best, mm -hmm. and we need to listen uh, to what uh, the infectious disease professionals uh, have to say. Don't believe in, 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 in uh, don't listen to all these conspira conspiracy theorists, and there Pastor, are a lot of them out there. Can, can I interrupt just for a second? Yes, sir, go ahead. And I guess that's my issue. What about other professionals who are medically trained, mm -hmm. who, are, who are just as astute mm -hmm. as Dr. Fauci or Dr. Gupta, mm -hmm. some of the ones that, that are very influential, what about those who, who, who looking at the same thing, but have a different perspective? Well, my question is, are they as astute as people like Fauci? I think he's, he's been uh, uh, an epidemiologist for uh, uh, under, what, six or seven presidents. Mm -hmm. we right. have, now, we right. have a lot of new uh, uh, people who are studying disease. 
But I think I would go with the guy who's been studying it for six or seven presidents for 30 or 40, 50 years, opposed to the new guys uh, on the scene. Uh, I don't know those individuals who you're talking about, but but I know that that uh, Fauci has been uh, in his field for for a long time. So I'm going I'm going to go with his facts. Uh, I'm not going to go with the with with the facts of of of, 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 of people who have not had the experience uh, that that he has. So so you don't think that I mean I, I you you said that was that you're going to go with those facts, which I respect. Go, you go ahead. Go ahead. I, I, don't, I don't want to chase a rabbit. So, <laughs> <laughs> Pastor Ricky, well, I'm so glad you asked me for the uh, last one on the panel here. Is because I don't want to ask the question, and so I got my answer. Thank you guys for answering my question. And if those who are watching online and you say, well, just kind of sum it up, what you got from their answers is one: we need to trust in those who know what they're talking about, mm -hmm. who yes. studied it. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then I believe the most uh, one that we should look at is prayerfully consider God concerning anything that we have a decision to make on. That's right. And that's my answer. Amen. Oh. Amen. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I, I hope that you have enjoyed this just as much as I have. And I want to say this in summation. Uh, first of all, I want to thank our panelists. Thank you, gentlemen, uh, for taking the time out uh, to come and address these concerns of our community. We definitely want to do more um, as we move forward and see how far we can take this thing uh, to make our communities better. Uh, but to my community, some of you guys, we've gone to school together. Some of us, uh, you know, I've seen you, you know, raising kids, we're raising kids together. Uh, some of you have been mentors uh, for me and people that I've watched uh, grow uh, in society and in our community. And uh, I just want to thank you for tuning in. My heart and the heart of our panelists and everybody in OPE Media is to see us come together as a community uh, uh, to do better by each other, uh, to help each other, to help be a guide. We also have incredible resources that are right here around us that can help us uh, in every phase of life. Those of us who are going through things, no man an island uh, unto himself. Don't, don't be by yourself and listening to all these different voices that are far away from you on mm -hmm. social media, whatever, that don't care about you. You have people in your backyard that's experiencing things exactly the way you are, if not have already experienced them and they have knowledge and wisdom. And to our leaders out there on the political side, we know that some of you are men and women of God as well. Let's come together. Let's have some difficult conversations and let's take things to another level so that our community feels strengthened um, and so that we can move forward and be progressive towards overcoming the pandemic and anything else uh, that may come our way. Um, from OPE Media Group, I want to say thank you once again to everybody that tuned in. God bless you. We appreciate you. And hopefully we will be seeing you very soon uh, with another discussion like this. God bless you. Good night.